Good evening and welcome inside the Vernon Curling Club. I'm Jordan Kiss for draw two of women's action here at the Prestige Hotels and Resorts Curling Classic. In this mm. matchup tonight, it is Team Guschelak versus Team Jensch from Germany. As we are now on to the second of the lead stones. And it's the Guschelak lead, Stephanie Whitaker Kask. Her first rock did go through the rings. Nobody heard that though. Now I'm good. <laughs> but did everybody hear that last part? Yeah. Okay. No worries. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. And now for the uh, Team Yench lead, Annalena Yench, Daniela's sister. Here's Team Yench from Houston, Germany. Multiple world championships in. European Championships under their belt. This is their second year playing in this event here in Vernon. Last year they did, they, uh, did not make the playoffs. They, Finished with a record of two and three in five games. And now for Team Gushlak now is around a second stones. It's young gun Megan McGilvery who is from Vernon. New addition to this team. Quite nicely, and we'll sit in the back of the eight foot. Does look like they are shot in a rock, but for uh, Team Yench, a opportunity to lock one on right back to it. Gonna be the Team Yench second Clara Flom. Rock's got a little extra weight to it. You gotta be careful not to take your own out here, and she will take it, and it will spill. Even Gushalak sitting the one. Team Gushalak, this is her second, their second event this season. They last played in the King Cash Spiel, which of course, which the, was the first event here on the BC Women's Grand Tour, as this is the second, pre presented by Baylor directing. Best Western. They went two and two with a King Cash. Got a lot of experience on this team. You know, last season, their best finish was at the King Cash, finishing second. They had a couple third place finishes as well, including in this event last year where they finished third. Come to rest on the center line. Now a little more room here for Team Yench to uh, see this yellow. Although that blue one at the back will will go with it. So you can again just freeze lock it on the T line. Team Yench is that <clears throat> rock again from Clara is a little heavy. We'll nick the yellow one, but again we'll roll to the back of the rings. This is their third event. Excuse me, their fourth event on the season. Uh, the best finish was a uh, 
third place at the Cameron's Bruin Oakville Fall Classic. That was at the end of August, beginning of September. He also played at the Stew Cells uh, Taker, Tankard in Oakville, as well as the Car Cargill Curling Train Center Icebreaker at the end of August, which they finished fifth. This is their second year playing here at the Prestige, where last year they, we've already mentioned this, they went two and three. <laughs> That's the Team Gushalak third, Grace McGinnis. And again, a little heavy. We'll hit her yellow and we'll sit for Shotstone at the back of the eight foot there. There is an opportunity here for Team Yench again to play the come around. You can still sit Shot Rock behind your corner guard, and it's the Yang's third, Amira Abbeys. So far, the story really on has been the draws have been heavy. And both draws uh, in the draw to the button before the game were did go past the two to the back gate, back 12 foot. This one again has got a little extra speed to it, but should be fine. And we'll sit right in there and we'll be the shot rock here for now. Now for Diana, she's going to ask Grace, again, most likely play the freeze. Just taking a look at the angles here. Let me double check to see. Who shot it? Is she did signal. It's blue sitting first and third, and yellow is sitting second. So it is again just this freeze here behind the corner. Shouldn't sit and shot stone here. What's the other guys? <laughs> and now for uh, Team Lynch, you can play in. A little soft weight shot here. Get to the inside of that yellow one and and roll. And this one looks very close. They're gonna get by that guard first, and it will. And it will kind of jam at the back, leaving. Blue and Team Yench, one for sure. Uh, looks like Yellow is sitting second there at the back of the date foot. But again, it's another chance to freeze here. You can corner that blue one. It will be her first.
Stephanie Cask on the right. Megan McGilvery on the left. As they just wait for this one to curl a bit up for them. And it's looking pretty close. And again, it's got some little extra speed to it. Will make contact and will sit shot stone in the forefoot. for Team Gench is there a way to uh, hit that Yellowstone out and sit your two here because it's very easy to jam it on the yellow one at the back of the eight foot Daniela Yench playing her first coming off looking to make another run out of this year on the international side of things fourth place finish give me a third place finish at the European curling championships last year as this one comes in racks on the guard and last year at the women's world championships they uh Finished with a record of five and seven. Now for Gushalak here without the last rock, a very good chance to force, looking to play the come around the uh, center guard. to be able to sit here. It will be a force to one as there isn't a double. Unless, no, there's no double no matter really where you put this unless you're short and really wide. Well, that's impossible for curlers at this level. It's really the first draw we've seen towards the middle in this, and all of it's been towards the wings. So, a little brand new spot up here. Looks like they might have got caught in it. It does look like it's coming up a little short. Well, the sweepers are hard on this one. It's going to be very close to sit second sh shot here, and it will come in to the top of the eight foot. Uh, looks like it might have been a little short. As Daniela takes a look at it. And I'm going to assume it's blue sitting second shot here. So this is most likely a shot for two for Team Yench here in the first. with her final stone here in the first. Here are Abez on the line call. Trip to the inside, sneak it by and it'll roll spin up, but it will be a score of one here for uh, Team Yench in the first. They'll take the one of the lead here early on in women's action at the Prestige Hotels and Resorts Classic. Miles ago, champ. 
Shouldn't we be going faster? Nah, with Bel Air Direct, you can save money on your optional car insurance by driving safely. Up to 25%. Slow and steady, Jen. Save up to 25% for safe driving on your optional car insurance with Bel Air Direct. Back inside the Vernon Curling Club here on Sheet One, where I'll be live streaming every game here at the Prestige. That is the, of course, second event on the BC Women's Curling Tour presented by Bel Air Direct Insurance and Best Western, an official hotel of Curl BC. So I'd like to thank Via Sport and the government of BC who are supporting all events through all BC Curling Tours through hosting BC. So thank you for making this stream possible. Jordan Kiss here with you is the first stone from Annalena Jensch will slide through the rings. And an opportunity here for Stephanie to play the corner guard. You also have to give out Give a shout out to uh, Dave Merklinger and his staff here at the Vernon Curling Club for organizing this event, doing the ice as well, which has been very good early on. As again, this one is heavy and Daniela will come out to sweep that and it will go through the ring. So first, so both lead stones here in the second end will slide on through and we'll restart with seven rocks aside. Just two other games going on on this draw here in ladies action over on sheet two. It's uh, former BC junior curling champion uh, Corinne Brown against Cheryl Bernard, Olympic, <coughs> Olympic silver medalist from 2010. And over on sheet three, it's uh, Kate Giles against Team Piarchuk. That rock will come up tight, just short, which means Team Gooselag won't be able to hit it. Of course, five rock rule in effect here. Eight ends of play. There are no time clocks, no timeouts at all. They'll just play eight full ends. This one will be asked to be coming in the rings and it will be. I'm not going to get this one T line and it will come up from the top of the eight foot, kind of half in the 12 as well. And that the team Yenshi and Clara Fom, a chance to play the hit and roll behind their own stone. This one curl now. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> will gonna hit just off nose and sit there a little more on the eight foot, but a uh, another chance here for Team Gushalak to play the open hits and again low roll to the wings. They do have the last rock here in the second and don't want to go behind the center guard just yet, a little early in the end. I'll keep it safe for now. We keep it keeps the blank into play. It also does keep your two available as well. If, say if Team Yench does make a couple mistakes. There's 
Megan executes her first shot here in the second perfectly, and she will sit. And for a few minutes now, another chance to play that hit and roll. I just definitely playing a little straighter on the hits. Seems some draws curl up a bit at the end. But overall, it's been very good here early on as we're eight, ten ends into uh, the women's action. Her action here, of course, in our first game earlier, it was Team Kovalevo defeating Team Daniels 5-4. Again, just trying to make this one curl and it will now how far will it roll it will roll on the center line and now for Diane what does she do here again hit and roll wide you could again if you wanted to you could play the hit and roll behind but the thing is again it's still early in the end but also that's a very short run back for uh, Team Yench, and it's also a very delicate shot as it's almost edge on edge. The Rocks will play the shot, the shot you know. Megan McGilvery now on her second rock. And she will just come to the nose. Not a terrible result, no, for. Team Yench, they can't hit and roll behind their own, as Danielle is going to ask just for a little roll to the left. Here are Abbe's. This one's tight out of her hand. The sweepers are on this one. You can see it's getting close to that blue guard. And it will rack, but I guess there's any good news out of it. They'll almost play the split here and sit two. It's a good indication of maybe the weight was down a little bit. Now for Team Gushalak, so where do you put this yellow rock now? You, know, you don't want to hit because you could leave a double. So a good option would be to come here and corner freeze, but again, you won't be sitting second shot. You could do that, but they are going to elect to uh, just play the nose hit here. It does look like if they do play the nose hit, there won't be a double, but it will be an opportunity for Team Yanch to maybe at least shrink the gap between these yellows on, a, on the next one. Grace McGinnis now. This one's a little on the inside of the blue. It will hit. Now will it stick? And it will stick but it will roll a little too far we'll sit to the back of the 12 foot sitting third shot now for Daniela ask Amira to uh, just play the nose hit here And hit his main little roll and he's sitting nicely now sitting two without the hammer now there is a double there for team Gushalak if they wish to play it ideally you just at least, at least want to roll closer to that blue one so you can eventually bring your yellow into play at the back of the house. That one will just sit on the nose. And again for Team Yench, 
it would be a, a hit here, but you do want to roll in a bit here. Cause I, th I think they should be fine if if they do hit nose. It's tough to tell here, but the situation I was thinking of is if they do hit nose, they might not be second shot. But I think there's enough room there that they will be second. So a hit. No, again, roll isn't bad. You, you want to roll to the left here instead of the right. A little more rings to work with. But the important thing here for Team Yench is to hit and stick. If they do hit and roll out here, then it will give Diane the chance to play that hit on the blue one and bring that back yellow into play. And hopefully get her two. Skip stones now here in the second. And the hit is perfectly made by Daniela and looks like it is Team Yetch sitting two. Now at this point for Diane, looks like they're not like attempt them just being forced to one here. They're gonna try for their two. So they were maybe thinking of playing the come around. That is definitely an option. Marinello right looking at this angle here, maybe to play a double, it is quite thin. But it looks like the call by Diana just to, uh, you no, know, it's just to hit and just Kind of roll over here in the top 12 area. Maybe if you can get it over there and sit shot. You, you know, you force Daniela to, to a very, uh, where she has to be careful on her hit, where if she overcurls, it could jam. So, see where this rock ends up. They're on this one. This one looks very close. They're on and off it. And it's coming over. Did it roll too far? Oh, that's a good shot. It's really close. I think they're on it a little more. It's perfect. Now, if you are shot here for Team Yench, the op one of the options is just to, you know, split the rings here. Just sit anywhere's kind of on the right side of center. And you're pretty much forcing Team Gushalak to their one. But I, I believe it is Team Yench is still sitting with a single point here. So they are looking at the double in the situation. Now that will, if they do make it, then it'll be a blank opportunity. But I, w I would only do this if you are, if, if you, if, uh, me, if Team Gushlak is, is a shot stone. So looks looks like it's safe to assume that, that the Yellowstone is shot. And they're gonna play this double. So there's a double here for Daniela without the last rock. They are up one here in the second end. See how this wide spot reacts. I haven't seen much uh, too too wide here on, on close to the boards. And one will go, and the other a great shot there by Daniela. 
eliminates both yellows. And now a blank opportunity here for Team Gushalak. And I'll take the hammer into three. They just saw this spot on the last shot, so they should expect it to stay a little straight. Of course, priority number one here is just make that blue one go away. They're giving a signal of approval, and the blue will go, and it will be a blank here in the second end. So after two, it's Team Yench one, Team Gushalak zero. Jordan Kiss here with you inside the Vernon Curling Club for draw two action here in the prestige hotels and resorts curling classic. Team Yench up one after the blank by Team Gushalak in two. the rings they're going to play the hit here and Stephanie Cass makes it and will roll to the wings and now Daniela is going to ask Hurley Reed and Alina to play the center guard center guard is main now most teams will play you know without the last rock in, in this situation uh, you know most teams will just play the hit play the hit right now but you know just play it safe but team Yench, they're not too worried right now it is really enough in the end they can bail out if they need to but they do want to kind of bring play in towards the middle and you know force team Gushlak here to to their single that way team Yench can have the hammer in the even end Sweeping this one to Krill now needs to get there for weight as well. And it will come up short, so Team Yench a chance to play the come around draw. It's always crucial that you always take advantage of your team's mis or of your opponent's mistakes. And this is an opportunity to do just that. now her first here in the third and the 
This one's gonna be very close. Line's good, and I'm not, now I'm just trying to finish it here, make a curl. Weight looks there. And great shot there by Clara, and it will sit just on the top of the forefoot. You know, Team Yent was here earlier in the day practicing, so they do maybe do have a little better knowledge of the ice compared to uh, Team Gushalak, but that ice then is different from what it is now, definitely. You know, Dave Merkelinger was going to change it up a little bit. That's going to be the run back asked here for uh, Megan McGilvery. And we'll just get the one. And we'll open it up. Uh, it's still a good result for Team Gushalak. Which they do have that one in, in, in the back of the 12th foot that for Team Yen, you don't really want to forget about. As you know, when it comes down to skip rocks, that could become a factor by the end of this end. Center guard is the call. We're looking to make this one curl just a little bit here, and it will come to the center line. Almost even with that one in the four foot great shot there. Another run back here for. Uh, Team Gushalak and Megan McGilvery. Now again, a single peel will be made. We'll just throw the center guard one more time. Mary Abbeys. This one's a little tighter out of her hands. You see, it's already on the center line now. See, right now, if they play a plan B shot, maybe kind of tick and roll over. And we'll have enough speed. It will tick and it will roll over enough to sit on the center line. But it does leave that rock partially open. And a chance here for Team Gushalak to, to split the rings here and sit two. Bring that one back 12 that Team Yench ignored into play. discussing what they want to do here of course if you are tight here you know you, you, you do play it tight as if you do hit the guard it's not the end of the world at least you open it up again and they have to make another great guard looks well, like maybe a hack weight shot here for grace and you don't have to roll in this situation if you can if you can find a way to get there to, to the nose that's still a great result but, but if you can sit too, that is what you want. And this rock is getting close to the guard, and it will just nudge it, and but it will spill into the ring. So, so still a useful rock there. As it opens it up, you get one in the rings, and still without the last rock, your team manager are choosing to ignore those two blues. Excuse me, those two yellows.
be a very brave call, I think, because most people, in, again, as I mentioned earlier, most people in this situation, without the hammer here, they and their opponents like kind of out counter them at this moment. They will play the hit to just to try to cut them down here, but they are going to go with the aggressive route here. They play the guard. It's just the thing is now these guards have to be perfect, or or it could be a big end for a Team Gushlak. It is a another good guard from Amira. Just looking at the angle, there's not really a double peel on the blues, I don't think, without... No, there is a little one. You, 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 if anything, you'll probably roll over to the left and be a corner guard for your own rock. This one will come wide. I'll hit the yellow one. I'll knock the blue one into play. And, and now that's sitting second and almost takes those two yellows out of consideration for scoring right now. It almost wouldn't have been safer just to play the single peel on that one. That was the risk that was involved. But for Team Yanch now, we. Another opportunity to throw that center guard a little safer, a little less risk now involved, knowing that you are sitting two. for skip stones here in the third end. Uh, the the she knows this spot well, they know the line, they know, they know the right weight to throw. It's all about execution. Again, this one looks close, just sweeping it to curl. Alina Yanch on the left, Clara Falm on the right, and they will finish that, and it will come to the center line, bite the center. Another great shot there for Team Yanch, another perfect guard. Now for Team Gushalak, they are going right for it with the uh, come around. They're going to look to play the come around here and kind of sit in this back area. Ideally, if you if you can kind of get it above the T-line is where you want. Because the risk is if you do, you know, come back button there on the left, come back forward. It does allow, uh, you know, Team Mjensh just to come back around and sit right on the button, sit locked in there. And then for, if you're Team Gushlak, how do you get your one? So a very important shot here for Team Gushlak. Needs to be in the right spot, needs to be in the right line, needs to no, it needs to be the right everything here. If they want to get their two. But that that is what this call is. They could you know, maybe, maybe make a call and you know peel. And then you safe to say that Team Yench would throw another guard, then Gushlak will have the draw for her one, but again, But she wants to at least try for her two here with the hammer. Stephanie on this one. Need to get it there for weight. It is going to come up light. And for Team Yench, a chance to sit three here without the hammer in three. You, know, you want to 
You know, you play the come around in this situation. If you come around the yellow, you want to be top eight foot. If you're in, a, if you're, if you come top four, then allows Team Gushlak to play that run back for, for a single. If you're top eight foot, you play the come around. All Team Gushlak has was is they will have to play a double, very difficult shot. But they're also, as you can see, maybe discussing playing the come around on the left side. So it looks like they're gonna play the come around here and kind of sit in this four foot area. Maybe try to bury a piece of it. Or at least bury as much as you can. So it is a Danielle, it's a draw to the side of the forefoot here and put the pressure on Diane to make her last one. Keepers haven't really touched it too much. They are now. It's weight looks all there. The line's very close. Now they will bump their own. And they will sit open in the eight foot, giving you know pretty much giving an easier out here for uh, team G for Diane and her team. Because now if she can, now if she can again just come with some weight, hit and punch this blue one up to the side. So there's a shot for one here for Diane Gushalak and to tie this game up. They said it is against three, so big one here. It's just all about hitting your spot. Hitting the rock in the right place and you should make it. It's almost guaranteed. This one looks a little wide. This one's really wide and it will just get the one. It'll be a steal of two for Team Yench here in the third to take the three nothing lead as we go to four here at the Prestige Hotels and Resorts Trailing Classic. Update on the other two games going on here tonight over on sheet two. Cheryl Bernard holds a 2 nothing lead over Corinne Brown as they play the fourth. And again in the fourth end on sheet three, it's Team Giles up three, excuse me, up two to one over uh, Team Piarchuk. So we're on our feature sheets, three nothing for Team Yench after a steal of two and four. I'm Jordan Kiss here with you at the Vernon Curling Club. It's the first game for both of these teams. Second draw of action here on the women's side of the Prestige Hotels Resorts Curling Classic. The second event on the BC Women's Curling Tour presented by 
Bel Air Direct Insurance. Where Curl BC members can benefit from a discount on car, home, condo, and tenant insurance on top of any other savings you may have. And, and plus discounts and benefits you're already eligible for. And if you do call Bell Air Direct, be sure to mention you're a Curl BC member to get your exclusive premium. I'd also like to thank Theus Ford and Hosting BC. Of course, without them, this is not possible. So the first rock from Team Yench will come to the top of the forefront. It'll be a corner guard here for Stephanie Cask. Also give a shout out to our technical producer here, Marcio Siquero, who's been working non-stop today and make sure everything is perfect. Been working non-stop since we got here last night, Marcio. It's been a grind, but we are very happy to put in the effort to bring this to you on a Curl BC's YouTube page. So thank you for watching. So we'll have every game here on sheet one through the round rob until Saturday. Then we will move over to one of the middle sheets on Sunday for the playoffs. Of course, tomorrow the men's will get on their way. There's Jim Cotter in the field, Sean Gill, uh, Tyler Tardy here as well, as well as uh, Team Morizumi from Japan. Lots of big teams here on both men's and women's sides here in Vernon. So the center guard was thrown by uh, Annalena Yench there on her second one. I know for Team Gushlak, we will play a little come around freeze here, play a little tap. As this one needs to curl up a bit for him as the weight was very nice on that one. Just didn't get the movement they wanted. It is sitting open and a chance for uh, Team Mention Clara Fom here to uh, just kind of hit and flop on top of their own. Perfectly made shot there by Clara and Team Gushalak now and it's two blues frozen here. So play a tap here for Megan and at least separate those, get one of those blue ones to the back forefoot behind the T line, which maybe used to freeze later on in the end. Her first here in the fourth. And a great shot there by Megan. The blue will spill to the back of the eight foot. Now it is Team Yet sitting the single point as of now. Now Daniela will uh, play the come around here, sit on the center line. Really will want to get this one top of the four foot.
So one looks very close on this one. Now it's what's the weight? Does look a little heavy. We'll see where it ends up though. As it is sliding into the forefoot and will slide to the right on the teal on there. A little deeper than what they wanted though. You want to be a little higher on that one. Now for Team Gushalak, a chance to sit on top and really be able to set something up here. Freeze here for Megan. Sweep is on this one. As you can see, it's starting to move towards that guard. Freeze on the inside, and it will just nudge it. Looks like she had the weight on that one, but. Does end up in a usable spot top the 12 foot and Team Yench isn't going to make that usable rock any longer as they're going to look to play the hit. Nose hit would be really great for them. But she is going to ask the... Uh, throw the mirror for a slight roll in. Just you know, maybe bury a piece behind that center guard. You don't want to bury all of it because you, you still might want to use that layer in the end if you have to. But at least block off this freeze and kind of block off a freeze and block off a run back at the same time. Sweeps around this one. Don't want to over curl here. This could be bad for Team Yench, and it will slide up. But looks like Team Yench is still the shot stone at the back of the forefoot. It's a little down weight on that one, too. Curl a little more. Of course, it's curling a little more off the center line once you go towards the wing, so teams might not have picked up on that yet, but... Door is open for Team Gushlak to get another one in there and possibly score their two in this situation. As a, Ryan's going to ask Reyes just for a uh, small tap here. This one's very close right now. Sweepers are on it at the end. It's, the weight's come off a little bit. It looks like they'll just play, end up being a freeze to it. So kind of lost it for weight at the end, but still a very good result because it's lined up and for Team Yench, all you have right now is probably a guard. So the issue is, is, is if you hit one of those, you know, that yellow rock with any weight, it's going into the blue one. So maybe for them, maybe change the angles up a little bit. Maybe get to the inside. If you play a little tap, it's not it's not the end of the world. But right now for Team Yent, you're just trying to limit Team Gushalak to the single. It's around thirds last year and the fourth. Just tied out of, a, out of a, a Mira's hand. Sweepers are on it. They gotta get by this blue guard here. They gotta get by. And they will not. They will peel the top off. Team Gushalak, a door is wide open now. The opportunity is there for a 
you know, three end three ender right now, maybe four. So, so, so what can happen if you kind of take advantage of some mistakes and you know set the angles up right for yourself? Now she's gonna like to play a hit here on this kind of top two on the left. And doing that, she'll have full control of the front of the house. spill to the back of the four and that is not what you want if your team goosh you need to get that one further back because right now it's a little harder to get that blue one of the back button out but I still think you can if you throw enough weight the angle does look uh, you know will look okay for team goosh but you just made that shot a little harder than what it need what it needed to be Now, if you're Team Yench, you have a decision to make here. You can't, you can't really touch those two mm -hmm. yellows that are in the forefoot. Now, you possibly could. Discussing things here, you you possibly could, you know, place some weight out of this. Maybe you hit this one, run into the top one here. Or this will spill open. You'll hit this one here. Then this one will probably still come back here, but at least it opens up the middle a little bit. But what they're discussing is putting a rock right here kind of the top of the 12 foot I'll kind of partially block this shot here make it a little more difficult so if you so if you can put it just right on the corner of this yellow rock at the top of the 8 foot Could save them the end. That's around first of the skip rocks here in the fourth, and it's a big one here for Daniela Yench. We're going to play the corner freeze. This one looks very close. And it is made to perfection. Now the shot there for Team Gushalak is still available. So for Team Gushalak, beforehand you were able to kind of throw some weight at those two yells and still stick in there and maybe sit three, but now it's a little harder to, uh, you still can sit your, uh, sit your three, but you have to, but I don't think you can throw enough weight at it to move both of those blues, plus those two yellows as well. You've got to move four stones there. But for Team Goosh, looks like the move right now is to at least get one of those in there and at least hit shot rock. But you have to be careful here because if you're only sitting one of those, uh, Team Yanish could definitely block it off and just force you and you're not going to have anything for your two. Although, keep an eye on this, sh unless they're kind of in off here. 
That might be available on Diane's last. That might be the only shot she has after, after Daniela's final one. It is playing the tap here on these two yellows. Looks like based on the ice in this spot here, they are just playing with some light tap weight. Almost like a tap freeze here. And if you do lock it on, it does allow you maybe to throw bigger weight on, on your final one if you have a chance at it. This one's looking very nice from Diane. They will hit the top yellow and sit there, and they are sitting one here with the hammer. But did they leave a double for Team Yench? Just can she, can Daniela see enough of this yellow one kind of right here in front of Amira here and kind of play the double and spill this one off to the side? I don't know if it's there, but it, again, will force Team Gushlak to the single. I have to think the other option maybe would just be to guard it that way Diane doesn't have the same shot for possibly her two but I don't know if that shot for two is still there like, like you could just put a guard here like there's nothing wrong with that Also, you know, Team Yinch looking at if maybe uh, Diane has this one to run into, but I think that rock at the top of the eight foot's just blocking that off. So, Diane does have this tap tap here. She does have this tap tap here again for her two. If she wants to play it, and it looks like Team Yinch is going to look to play the guard here block that off and then what I mentioned earlier what team Gushalak will have they'll have this in off you know for three and if you hit it in the right spot that could be a shot for five so lots to be decided here in the fourth that's team Yench gets set to throw her last here in the fourth end Just gonna plug the hole. This one's starting to curl on them. I wanna keep this one straight. It will hang on the center, but it will do the job. Now for Team Gushalak. It looks like this is there. Now you could play it with soft weight for your two. And I think... 
There's a shot there. If you throw some big weight and they hit in the right spot, it's a shot for five. Two, three for sure. No, two for sure. Could get three out of it. Can eat, again just as easily get five if you hit if you hit it the right way with enough weight. So she she has that kind of hit it right in the crotch of those two blues. Also, again, this this in off here is still there. I really feel that those are the only two shots she has. But this one is this one in the middle is really risky, just because of that rock right there. You're gonna have to get very close to that one. But it looks like the call here just to play soft weight. Kind of just tap it right in there for your two. If you can get enough weight out of it, you know, you can maybe get your three. But they are sitting one as we speak for Team Gushalak. Looking to get more than that here in the fourth. Of course, there's no fourth end break here as they'll go right into the fifth after this one is over. The final rock here for Diane Gushalak in the fourth. This one, this one's close. This one's very close. It's got a curl for him. It's got a curl. And they'll nick it, but they will sit there and they will sit shot. Is that three? It looks like it is three for Team Gushalak. We'll have to wait and see, but a great shot there by Diane and gets her team right back into this one. So it's two for sure, maybe three. We'll double check, we'll go to break first, then we'll give you an update. But a uh, game saving shot there by Diane Gushalak in the fourth end here in Vernon. Woo -hoo. Sick fight, you gotta see this. Look, 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 look. Shh, I'm saving money. Save up to 25% on your optional car insurance for safe driving with Bel Air Direct. Back here in the Vernon Curling Club at the Prestige Hotels and Resorts Curling Classic. It was a score of three for Team Gushalak there in the fourth end. And now Team Yench will have a hammer as we play five as that rock from uh, Stephanie Kask will come up short. Jordan Kiss here with you as I will be all weekend. Every game on sheet one will be broadcasted live here on Curl BC's YouTube page. Is the second event on the BC Women's Curling Tour presented by Best Western, where Curl BC members can use the corporate ID code and get your pens ready. Write this down 01504820. You use that number when you, uh, you know, book a Best Western hotel and you can receive discounted rates up to 19%. Up to 19%. So you can do that online or you can call 1-800-WESTERN. So always remember to stay out of Best Western when you can. We also like to thank Via Sport and the government of BC who are supporting all events on the BC Curling Tours this season through hosting the BC. So thank you for making this stream possible. We appreciate that. 
So thank you to the Vernon Curling Club and Dave Merklinger. We've been working nonstop to get this all ready to go for the athletes. Now we'll play her second rock here in the fifth. And just come around the corner guard. And then we'll just get by the yellow one. And we'll sit in the back of the eight foot there as Diane will ask Megan to. Play the hit. Just play the hit and roll behind the roan at the center line. So it will make its way through the hole. Now where will it, will it roll? It will roll to the left. Now an opportunity here for uh, for her team Yench here to bury behind the corner guard. To put this in the right spot, it'll be a very difficult one to get out. Now you don't want to freeze on the on that yellow one if you're team Yench as. If you do, it will allow uh, Team Gujlak to sit right on top of it and be, and be shot rock. So you'd love to be kind of top eight foot kind of in this area. And of course you want to be shot and this one needs to curl for them so you don't want them to be open as well. come kind of be half in the eight half in the 12 and it is enough to sit shot stone and then looks like Megan will be able to see pretty much all of it well you have to get to the you have to be kind of be careful here they're gonna ask for the hit and roll towards the middle now the risk is of course you over curl and you jam So this is an important line call here by by Diane. If she if she notices it's tight, maybe early, maybe you, you might you might just have to let it curl a bit, try to get to the inside. One needs to curl for them a bit. And it is made. Great shot by Megan. Great line call by Diane. And Stephanie will sweep that to the other side of the eight foot. And now Team Gushlak sitting. Two here without the last rock. Now Danielle is going to ask just for to come around the center guard. Update on uh, sheet two. Cheryl Bernard scored uh, score two in the fifth end to take a four to two lead over Corinne Brown. And over on sheet three is uh, team. Kowarchuk up three to two over Team Giles. They are currently in the uh, fifth end on on a uh, skip stones. And that rock there by Clara came to top the twelve foot. Uh, be an open hit here for Grace. Of 
is her sister Allison, coach coach of Team Brown. Um, this one won't curl up for him, and will it? It'll just sneak under the yellow one. That was closer than what it needed to be for Team Gooshluck, but they got away with it. But another opportunity here for uh, Team Yench to play the come around. Team Yench right now gearing up for the year European Championships, will be which will be held in uh, Sweden in just over a month from now. Of course, expecting to be rep representing Germany at the at the Women's World Championships this year, which will be in Prince George. Drawn. Grace is going to be asked to freeze here, but this one's got a little extra oomph on it, and uh, it's this could be costly as it will slide through. Yeah, but it is going to go through. Well, that one, you know, you would love to be a little lighter on that one, even if you're top of the rings in that situation, you can use it later on to maybe tap and raise. But a chance here for uh, Team Yench to sit two rocks buried on the sun line with the hammer. And if Amir can make this one, they'll be set up very nicely to score multiple points. Then this one's a little heavy. I want to make sure they get it by. Will it get by now? Where will it stop? Diane hard on the brush and it will slide to the back of the eight foot. Kind of bite in the eight and looks like the art that blue rock is fourth. So uh, Team Gushalak getting away with one there. Is, now they have an opportunity here to lock one on and you know, great chance to force Team Yench to the single. If you know if Team Yench made that last one, they're, they're sitting here, and if you're Team Gushalak, you're gonna have to. You, you had to make a move on that guard, but luckily for them, they don't have to. Of course, kind of do the same shot. Kind of come in here and just sit right on top of the red right of the blue one, and then it'll be uh, very difficult for Team Yench to score their two. Reapers have been on this out of her hand. It needs to curl a bit for them. Oh, did they overdo it? Did they overdo it? Oh, they overcook that one. It's going to slide to the back of the eight foot. And both teams letting each other off the hook. There's a little maybe a communication error on that one. I believe I heard Grace yelling hard or... I'm not 100% sure, but another chance here for Team Yench to bury one and sit two.
again, this one's got some speed to it. Maybe a little faster spot here. As both teams can't seem to uh, figure out the right weight. Was it will it come down? It will sit there, sitting two on the button. Now, I think the only shot here for Team Gushalak would be to kind of just, again, hit and roll on top. Uh, I don't think there's a double there for them to sit the one, because it looks like this rock right here where you need to hit it will most likely kind of spill onto this yellow one. You know, don't need to play a ton of weight against like Diane's you need back eight, back four weight. Just tap this one back here, sit on top. I think right now for Team Gushalak here, it's very hard to steal in this situation, so maybe your best chance is just to force Team Yench to their single. But looks like Diane's gonna like to play this double here. Now again, it, it is makeable. You can spill this yellow kind of over top of these. She's the blue over top. But but again, if if you if you hit this wrong, this blue rock right here will kind of kiss off this one and slide right here. And also this this blue rock. That could jam into that yellow one there on the left, so. A very risky shot there by Diane. That's so her last stone here in the fifth. And this one's close. It's gonna be close. Did they wait too long on it? Did they wait too long? And it will do ex exactly what I said. And it's, it's still Team Yench sitting one. Now I believe that I believe that blue here on the left is sitting third. So it looks like oh, so it looks like she. Team Yent should be able just to uh, kind of play some tap weight at this, just bump that into there. But also, I think the angles are right. You, you, you could just play some weight at this blue one, hit that, then roll over and just bump this yellow over a couple inches. I do believe Yench is sitting third shot here. So this is a shot for three. Definitely a shot for multiple points here. We'll see if they you know, take the drop for the two or they play the tap for the three. You know, I played that tap all day long. Final stone here in the fifth end. Playing the hit here. Oh, this one's starting to take off on them. This one's starting to move. Gotta keep this one straight. Gotta keep it straight for your two. And she will make contact and it will sit. And it's two for sure. Looks like it is three, and Team Yench will get that three they gave up in four right back and regain the three point lead here after five. Six to three for Team Yench.
All set to go here in the sixth end of the uh, women's draw. Draw number two at the Prestige Hotels and Resorts Curling Classic here at the Vernon Curling Club. Jordan Kiss here with you. Score of three for Team Yench in the fifth. To regain their three point lead. And that rock will slide to the back of the eight foot, and Diane will ask Lead Stephanie Cass to uh, play the corner guard. slide into the rings And Alina Yench now. Hope she'll make it in a hit and roll to the four foot. Stephanie Cast, another opportunity at the corner guard. And this time she makes it perfectly. And of course, Team Yench can't hit it out yet. Five rock rule is in effect. So she will play a uh, tight guard here. And if you're in, that's fine. Don't want to be super light. Clara's coming across down the sheet there and you know, trying to make this one curl. Try to get this one over the center line and closer. And they will come up kind of right on the Chambers logo right there. Just short of it. With a center guard and maybe something Diane will use as this end goes on. No, she's not playing a lot of weight on this one. Uh, you know, she's playing, you know, back house, back line weight. Uh, just to kind of leave that blue one in play. Use it as backing right now, I think. Right now, for Team Gushlak, down late, you know, if you're down to the final three ends, you, you know, any opponent's rocks behind the T-line are very usable rocks. You can freeze them. You can, you know, uh, Team Yench could, you know, jam Team Gushlak's rocks on them, so... I'm going to play a lot of this weight of this one, but this one will almost like a control weight, but we'll make the hit and roll, make Megan McGilvery on that throw. That rolls into a good spot, and the angle's quite nice for a Team Gushalak. Team Yance just going to elect to play the uh, kind of run back on the round. A little easier here, as I mentioned. You know, it's it's quite easy, easy to jam that yellow one on the blue one. So play it a little safer here. You know, worst case, you open it up, then that yellow one is accessible. Let's 
this one's gonna be close. It will just get the single peel, but not terrible. Now, uh, Team Gushlak will play around the corner guard. Now you want to be kind of above that yellow one. It's, you know, you don't want to leave a double here with, but if you're kind of maybe top 12, they could leave Team Yench maybe hit and roll behind it. Now this rock has to be in the right spot here for Team Kushalak. But you also have to mention, uh, again, if, if Team Yinch uh, decides to play a role behind that corner guard, that, again, the jam still comes into play, but this one will come up a little light and rack on the guard and will roll open, but... For Team Yinch, chance to play the hit. Can hit stick on the nose here. Near Abez. Perfectly executed. Yeah, for Team Gushlak again. A little, little kind of tap weight here. Just punch that to the back of the 12 foot, roll behind the guards, and sit for shot stone. Grace McGinnis throws her first here in the sixth, and this one is really curling on them. And again, it will get by the guard and it'll go by everything. Tough break there for Team Gushalak. Now yeah, for Team Yenshin. Opportunity knocks, chance to uh, put up a center guard here and really set yourself up good here to uh, steal a point here in six. to the center great shot there by Amira and team Gushalak now chasing with the last rock as we're on the last of uh, third stones we're gonna be forced to peel here uh, of course team Gushalak still have two ends after this one still have time you're only down by three I think right now uh, if you're team Gushalak you maybe you want to see if you're able to try blank this end and try again in seven. You, know, you, you, you won't be happy taking one here. I'm going to give it for you like you either blank this end or you, can t or you can get your two out of it somehow, but I think right now for them it's also about making sure they have a shot for one. Grace McGinnis with a double peel, and we'll still sit up front there. And Team Yench, an opportunity again to set themselves up nicely. Chance to uh, come just right in the top 12 here. You know, bury about half of it. You know, you, you, get, you, have, you have some room to miss the shot. If you're light and you end up up here, that's still, that's, that's still fine as well. And also, if you maybe come in a little deep in corner and kind of corner freeze on that blue one, again, not 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 a terrible result.
Well, that's Daniela Yench with her first here in the sixth. This one's coming up very nicely for him. Trying to get it towards center a bit more. And she will lock it on. And now for Team Gushalak. Now they're going to play this come around here. Come this way. You want to be kind of like right here, the top, right there, the kind of like the top of the forefoot. Uh, that way, you know, you, you don't want Team Yench be, to be able to, to kind of play these two because it's it's wide open. So if you're, you know, if you're if you're back eight, Team Yench does that, then you're forced to your single. But Diane's gonna come back down and take another look at it. Maybe uh, just change it up a bit. We are going to come the other way here. Let's see where they want this one. I personally like coming in this way, sitting top four here. That way, if Team Yint ignores and decides to, uh, you know, maybe play a tap on these two, you still have a chance to maybe kind of run this guy in at it. We'll see where they where they place this rock. I don't really see a, a real great spot here. Like you're, you know, any, anywhere is a kind of in this area. You're you're wide open. You know, you if you come to the back, the forefoot. Uh, you know, Team Yint again just does that. So we'll have to wait and see till this rock comes to comes to rest. Maybe they're trying to bring this one all the way back. It will sit open for a uh, for Daniela. You know, she's looking at it. You, you just peel it. You, you force Team Gushalak, you know, to her one here. But I think, I feel like she sees an opportunity to possibly steal, you know, steal one, maybe two in this end. So she's looking at it. I think if she noses it, if, if Gushalak will have maybe a kind of a hit for her single, which I think she will. Maybe not. She, then Diane might just have, you know, again, just th this draw here on her last. But the important thing here for uh, Team Yench is just to make it, make this yellow one disappear. You know, you, you don't want to miss this and give up the two. You give up the one, you're up two going into seven with the hammer and all you really have to do in seven will be to score and you have a really good opportunity to win this game. Now oh, this one looks really tight. This is really tight. Sweepers are hard on this one. It's gonna get by their blue ones and they will hit it but still hit the yellow. And it will bury those two blue ones even more. A very lucky break for Team Yench. As that could have easily been two for Team Gooselak, but it's a draw for one for Diana. It is her the exact same shot as her last one. Oh, too close for comfort on that one for Team Yench. It needs full four here to uh, get her single. Well, 
Final stone here for Diane Gushalak in the sixth end. This one looks very close. Sweepers are on it. Looks like they're going to make it. Oh, Mira. oh, did they oversweep it again? Did they oversweep it? It looks like it just hung on there to uh, score the one. We'll take a quick look at it. It does look like it is one yellow. Uh, maybe it is one blue. Mira's saying it's blue. Well, they're going to put the stick to this one. Oh, that can be another costly sweeping error by uh, the front end of Team Gushlock. They had one in the last end. and uh... Now here we do have access to the overhead cams from where we are. And it does look like it is blue. Uh, it is very close. But they will put the stick to it just to make sure. And this could be a this is a big point. Uh, of course, if D if Yench gets the steal here up four, and but if it's score one for Team Gushlak, it's still a very close game. But. the one to do the measuring here. They'll measure the blue one first. So go over to the yellow one now and we'll see who it is. And they're going to point it to it as blue. So it will be a steal of one for Team Yench here in the sixth end. They'll take a 7-3 to three lead going into end number seven. inside the Vernon Crown Club. It's end number seven between Team Gushalak and Team Yench. Team Yench picking up the stolen point on a measure in the sixth. Update over on the other two games happening tonight on uh, sheet two. It's a very close one between Shayla Bernard and Corinne Brown and Team Bernard has a four to three lead over Team Brown as they played the seventh end. They're currently on skip rocks. And over on sheet three, it's a uh, PR Chuck up four to three over uh, Team Giles as they play the seventh end as well. guard made by Stephanie and Daniela West and Alina to uh, let's play a freeze on their own. I just like to thank our uh, BC Curly Tour sponsors, Bel Air Direct Insurance and Best Western, the official hotel of Curl BC. Here at the Vernon Curling Club, I'm Jordan Kiss for our second of uh, our counted correctly 12 draws this weekend 
We have four on tap tomorrow, starting at 8.30 between uh, Team Slattery and Team Thompson on the women's side. Then at 12.30, we'll have some men's action, which will be a good one. It'll be hometown favorite Jim Carter taking on Team uh, Morizumi from Japan. And then we'll have later on in the week at 4.30, we'll have defending BC Women's Champion, uh, Sarah Work taking on a young up-and-coming team of Team Kulo. Then the, the night action will be another fantastic one. Two-time World Junior Champion Tyler Tardy will take on King Cash winner Sean Giel. So a great slate of games tomorrow. It'll all be here on Curl BC's YouTube page. Plus we'll have some guest commentators as well of and here, uh, Dave Merklinger will be a guest on one of them. We'll have to wait and see which one he decides. I'm thinking it's going to be a Cotter versus Morizumi. Uh, we still have one here to finish off on sheet one. We are in the seventh end as we now are on second stones. Oh my, this isn't uh, very close, is it? Now for uh, Team Gushalak here. Uh, maybe a chance at a Cheryl, soft way hit playing? and roll. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit, you got a lead. Oh. Megan McGillivray, her first here in the seventh. Fifth. And this one is getting close on that guard. And she will hit and will knock it in and roll over. Now Team Yench sitting the three without the last rock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of lots of open ice there. Absolutely, try it out. Yeah, for Team Inch, they're uh, looking at the peel. They are kind of sitting nicely. You know, it is a clutter of corner guards that you might have to worry about later on but if you again if you just plug this up there's uh, team Gushlak isn't going to have a, a roll behind they're going to play the uh, kind of the tight guard here on the right side just block the one that's on the right of the eight foot Across the job is done. They will plug the hole. Now for Team Gushalak here, you are down for you. Almost have to score two in this situation. And an option is there might be enough room to maybe play this long hit and roll. Kind of sit in there. If you can make that, that would be great. Again, they're looking just to remove this top one here, at least kind of clear up the front a bit, make it more accessible. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think ideally this is something you want to move out of the way right now if you're Team Gushala. Megan will move it. So no more buried rocks for Team Yanshin, but they are still sitting too. For Team Yench, you sit in the two. You could come and can I play maybe a guard here? Kind of on the center line, kind of block one of those two off. Okay, maybe move these around a little bit as well. And then you can also just play that straight come around and can sit back where the other rock was. Third stones here in end number seven. They're kind of playing a little wick off this one. Needs to curl a little bit. Trying to roll it over to move things around. It's not a terrible result, but not a great result either. Now for. Now for Diane, she's looking at maybe just kind of sitting in that pocket there. You kind of corner for each of this blue one, you're sitting quite nicely. It'll be very difficult for Team Yench to get out. Then even corner for each of the one on the left, but she's asked for some like back, you know, back four, back eight, wait, just, just a just uh, uh, jiggle these blues around a bit and create a little more of a pocket for your team. And this one's maybe a little heavier than what they wanted. But that is a, a good result. Sweet. Looks like it is just Team Yent sitting the one. Gushalak is second. No, I don't think they can play big weight at that yellow one because I think it'll hit that blue one in the fourth foot and then kind of bounce over and just move this one out of the way a bit. So I think they are going to just play the guard on this one. Perfectly made by Mira Abes and Team Gushlak now. You getting on the edge of the rails here. Team Gushalak, you, 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 you have to, you know, make that accessible. You need, you want to score to you here. So the call is to play the run back. At least peel something out of the way. If you can, if you can remove both those blue rocks, that'll be great. And that's look what, what looks like what Diane's looking at. Maybe even kind of hit this kind of blue one across here, and then this one will kind of 
come into the pile. I'll have to wait and see what happens. Grace McGinnis now her last stone here in end number seven. We all move both of the blues, a good shot there, and it does open up the front. Now the middle's a little more clear, but for uh, Team Yanch, it's still your advantage right now. Again, they're looking at sitting one in the pocket there. That would be great. Again, you could throw another guard on that yellow one. Just looking at all their options here. Right now for Team Yanch, you don't want to, you, you don't want Team Gujalak to score two here, but you will be fine with that because you you still will be up to two with the hammer coming home in the eighth. So they're looking at, you know, just placing it right in the hole here. You're again saying maybe play a tight guard on this one because if, if you guard this yellow one here on the left, you know, Team Gushalak has has you know two shots they could play the run back they, they could play the run back at it or they can you know again maybe kind of kind of do this with some soft weight and kind of and sit in there right and then if they can like if they can just for team goose like if they can just hit there in the corner just kind of sit right in there that would be quite nice because then that shot rock will not be able to get out uh, it looks like Team Yench has elected to play a guard here on the yellow. Kind of place it right there in front. As we're now on to skip stones here in the seventh end. Rock will come, will come in. They'll play this shot instead. We'll sit top of the eight foot. Not terrible, but not great either. Again, it's one of those kind of in between shots. Uh, let's quick update over on sheet two. Uh, Cheryl Bernard holds a two point lead over Team Brown as they play the eight. And And uh, Team Giles and Team Pugarchuk are uh, tied at four coming home as they are on second stones in the eighth end. And Gushalak, they are going to uh, kind of play this hit here. And just tap it up. The risk is right now this yellow rock can't go anywhere. It, it, it's there, but as soon as you make 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 some contact and bring it into play, you know Team Yench will probably have you know a run back on that one to use. So you have to be very careful here with how much you hit and where you hit it, and the weight you throw at it. Yeah, this quick correction over on sheet two. It's uh, Sheriff Bernard has a four to three lead over Team Brown as they play the eighth end. Excuse me, it is five to three. 
Uh, team Brown does have the last rock. And over on sheet three, uh, Team Piwarchuk has the final stone. On this rock here for Diane Gushlak makes its way down. And she will make contact, but it, it is Team Yench sitting the one. Now, the yellow double is there. It is definitely there. They could do that. They'll lose the one of the forefoot, but it will be a force of one uh, for Team Gushlak here. The other option, again, is, is, to, is to play the guard on it. Like, you, you, you play the guard. How does, you know... Diane will have to will have to play the run back to score her single point. So they so they just played this shot on, on the on the last two, so they know it that they you know they know the path, they know the weight, so they feel very comfortable and confident in this one. So last rock for Daniela Yench here in the seventh end. Up four without the hammer. And the guard is made it will it sit down it will sit it should do the job yeah for team gushalak i honestly feel all, all you have to do is just play play this blue here maybe with some hack weight tap it to the yellow just just to tap this one up to the button that's all you have. It's only a shot from one. I don't see. Oh, the Diane's. No, this is this is here for two. What Diane's looking at possibly, maybe, the in off. I think that's there for two. Or she's also looking at a. Uh, hitting the yellow one. And then possibly this yellow one will clip, this yellow, and then it'll go into here. Then. This blue was spill. That will be for two. If you throw it hard enough and you're really lucky, you get three out of it. As it, <laughs> this, as this blue could run into that blue, but tough times here for Team Gushalak. As this could be the game here. You know, I think they're really trying for their two here. Down three without the hammer. Uh, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to steal three in the last end. So they're going to take their chances here and try to get their two. Maybe. I I, th I think I think this is for two. I don't I don't, I don't see three here. But I can honestly say this is this is the game here on this shot. This this could be this could be it. So big shot here for Diane Gushalak in the seventh end. The last rock here, down four. It's a big one. Sweepers are on this one right away. And they're saying they missed it. And it will be a steal of one for Team Yench, it looks like. They're going to take a look at it. It is one. And that will be handshakes. Team Yench will pick up the victory. 8-3. to three. They will go to 1-0.
Team Gushalak will go to 0 and 1. Now, right now, stay tuned. We'll uh, we'll we'll just bring you over to uh, sheet two right now. It's Team Brown against Team Bernard. Uh, Shell Bernard is up to without the hammer. She's get set to throw her last rock. She is yellow. So it looks like she's coming through the hole here and uh, playing this blue one. Let's hit it out. We could have extra end. So if there is an extra end here on sheet two, we will do our best to bring you the coverage. <laughs> uh, we still have a close one here in end number eight. Last rock for, for uh, Cheryl Bernard here in the final end. And we'll just get by, we'll get the one. So it is Team Brown sitting one here. Now she has a draw to the, pretty much the forefoot to score her two here and force an extra. Stone here for uh, Corinne Brown needs to uh, sit two here to force the extra end. <laughs> Ashley Clamchuk on the on the left, Desiree Hawes on the right, Aaron Pincott in the house. Corinne did play this shot on her last one. She did hit the guard. This one needs to get by the yellow, and it won't. And it'll be a score of one, and Team Bernard will take the victory here. They will move to 1-0, and, oh and Team Brown 0-1. Oh and one. Now that will do us do it today for day one of coverage here at the Prestige Hotels and Resorts Curling Classic from the Vernon Curling Club. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 8.30 on women's, more women's action. Team Slattery versus Team Thompson. Uh, so we'll talk to you again tomorrow. My name is Jordan Kiss. Thank you for listening uh, today. Again, we'll talk to you very soon. Enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Miles ago, Jeff. Shouldn't we be going faster? Nah, with Bell Air Direct, you can save money on your optional car insurance by driving safely. Up to 25%. Slow and steady, Jeff. Save up to 25% for safe driving on your optional car insurance with Bell Air Direct. Sick fight, you gotta see this. Look, 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 look. Shh, I'm saving money. Save up to 25% on your optional car insurance for safe driving with Bel Air Direct.